parenthood is heavy lifting, literally, and low back pain from lifting little ones is one of the most common complaints I hear from my patients. A big reason for this is when were most people ever taught how to lift well and then suddenly you are doing it all of the time. Let's change that. In today's video, I'm gonna share with you my top three tips that I teach my patients for how to be able to lift their little ones well without having back pain occur in the process. And stick around to the end and I'll show you some extra ways to sneak in some leg strength work into all that lifting that you're already doing throughout your day. Let's dive in. Most people have heard the phrase, don't lift with your back, don't lift with your back, lift with your legs. But what does that actually mean? That doesn't tell me what part of my legs I should be using. It doesn't tell me how I should be setting my body up for the lift. And it also doesn't remind me that I'm supposed to breathe while I do the lift in order to help activate my core and offload my pelvic floor. These are the three things that I'm gonna be teaching you in the video as we go through a squat movement. And I'm gonna be using this kettlebell here as my little one, so please use your imagination along with me here in this video. So tip number one, get as close as possible to your child before you go to pick them up. Most of us are familiar with the idea that if you have an object and you're holding it straight out in front of you, that this is a lot more work, and especially on my back, than it would be if I was holding that item close to my chest. The same is true for your little ones. So before you go to lift them up, make sure that you get really close to them or as close as possible. This will allow you to be more successful for the lift and decrease the extra loading on your low back. Tip number two is a hip hinge strategy. This is going to allow us to take up the work into our glutes, which is your money maker for your lift, rather than using your low back to do the majority of that work. When we hinge from our hips, we want to stick that pelvis back and sit as if there is an imaginary chair behind me. This allows me to keep my weight back into my pelvis and then allows me to create a counterbalance with my torso for the weight that I'm about to bring to my chest, which is going to create extra load on the front of my body. So therefore, I want my pelvis back behind me to help create that counterbalance and allow my glutes and my legs to do the majority of that lift. Tip number three, we want to be able to breathe while we go through our lift. This is essential for helping to coordinate our core and our pelvic floor to also help to support the lifting activity that we are about to do. A tip that I like to share is blowing out as if you are blowing candles out. So there's a little bit of oomph in that process and blowing out a moment before and throughout the process of the lift. This will allow again for optimal core connection with that glute activity of your legs in the process. So let's tie all three of those things together as I lift my little one up off of the floor. So first I'm coming as close as possible. I'm going to hip hinge, stick that pelvis back so that my torso creates this counterbalance. Imagine like a 45 degree angle. I'm gonna come to my little one, inhale to prepare, exhale to stand up and then bring my little one up and go off to wherever I need to go next. Now these three tips can also be used when you're setting your little ones back down onto the floor. Think of these three tips and you're gonna do them in the reverse order. So I want you to think about your breath first. You're gonna to inhale to prepare, exhale throughout the lowering phase of the lift. Number two, you're gonna take advantage of that hip hinge strategy, bending forward to lower yourself down. Now I know that this might seem counterintuitive as you're holding your little one but leaning forward on that 45 degree angle, again, is gonna create that counterbalance to allow you to be able to control your descent all the way down to the floor. And then tip number three, get as close to the floor or whatever location that you are setting your little one down as possible to allow you to have better positioning to decrease extra loading on your back and allow your legs to help support you as you're down in the bottom of that squat. So once you're feeling confident using these three tips in a squat, I highly recommend progressing them to a lunge. This is one of my favorite ways to alternate lifting your little ones throughout the day because it also provides some really wonderful strength opportunities for each leg individually. I'm gonna review these three tips in doing a lunge so that you can feel confident being able to apply this at home. So first and foremost, you still wanna get as close to your little one as possible. You're gonna hinge from your hips in a staggered stance to come down to lower down to the floor. 
Once you get here, I want you to again get as close as possible to your little one. You're going to hinge in order to do that. And then you're gonna inhale here, exhale, to put your little one up onto your hip. Now you're gonna repeat those three tips one more time. So we have our little one as close as possible, either on a hip or central on your chest. You're going to lean forward. This is your hinge in order to really take advantage of that front glute. Then you're gonna start your breath. You're gonna exhale to shift forward and come up to standing. Similarly, when you go down to the floor, you're gonna use the same three tips again. Start with your breath, then you're going to initiate with your hinge, and then you wanna get as close to the floor as possible before setting your little one back down. So again, inhaling to prepare, exhale to hinge. Keep hinging a little bit further to come as close to the floor as possible to set your little one down for that transfer. Remember, you can use all of these tips in any activity where you are lifting your little ones. This includes getting them in and out of a car seat, a high chair, out of a stroller, etc. In every one of these situations, I want you to ask yourself the following questions. How can I get as close as possible to my little one? How can I take advantage of my hip hinge strategy? And number three, reminding yourselves to exhale just before and throughout the lifting phase with your little one. This will be able to help you to take advantage of all of those bigger muscles in your legs and your core and offload your low back for all the lifting that you are doing throughout the day. Let me know in the comments which of these three tips you found to be most helpful for you. And if you wanna learn more, stay tuned for the next video.